Hey guys, so I'm here to talk all things UNC. Being a couple months away from graduation, I've been in a deep period of reflection, you know, reflecting on my application process, my first year there, things I wish I knew, my journey as a pre-med student, being a first generation college student, being a covenant scholar, just so many things um, that I think are important, you know, I share with you all, especially if you are incoming or if you're planning on applying. Okay, I had to close my blinds a little because I felt the lighting was a little weird. Um, but first I want to start off by saying there is no written script on how to get into college. I just feel like all these, you have to do this, you have to do that. It just puts so much pressure on people and it can lead to discouragement. Even me, pre, um, pre-college, I was told that I couldn't get into so many schools because my SAT scores weren't good enough um, and things like that. Like in our college counseling office at my boarding school that I went to, there was a software program and based on our just SAT scores and GPA, we were like this little dot on a chart and it like predicted how likely we were to get into universities. And let me tell you, UNC was unlikely for me. Yet, I don't want you all to see what's like written on paper and like do your best to fit that norm. And I know a lot of, you know, schools are like, it's not just what's it's not your grades that like define you. And I think that is very true because I'm gonna share with y'all like my SAT score, that my SAT score was, was and my my uh, grades, I had pretty good grades, I'm not even gonna lie, but um, yeah. So we can go down the list of um, colleges I applied to and I need to pull it up on my laptop because I don't remember all that much. I just had to go get my other two flash drives that I think have all my um, college stuff on it. But if this is not on here, I'm gonna be absolutely heartbroken <laughs> because I won't be able to provide y'all with actual facts. Like I know y'all want the nitty gritty facts. Like at least that's what I would have wanted, um, you know, if I was browsing YouTube to find out about college in high school. I don't ever even remember what I was doing. Probably nothing. Okay, here are my boarding school applications. No, that's not what I want. So I applied to Brown, Columbia, Emory, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Lake Forest, Rice, Sarah Lawrence, Tulane, University of Miami, University of North Carolina, and UPenn, and Howard. I got into UNC, Emory, University of Miami, Howard, and I got waitlisted at Harvard. And as far as my SAT and ACT scores go, I took the SAT twice. I used to have test anxiety um, and I really did not do well on the SAT first go round, but I got a, t <laughs> I got a 22 on my ACT. Um, and I did not submit my ACT to UNC, at least. And then the first go round, I got like a 1500 out of 2400. Um, and then the second time I took it, I think they changed the scale. And it looks like I got 1330 out of 1600. As far as GPA goes, I had a 5.2 cumulative on a 6.0 scale. And that converted to a 4.0 scale is a 3.47. So if you want to round it up, I had a 3.5. But I really wasn't. So yeah, there's my GPA. Then, oh, I was pretty like involved. Um, like to the point where some of my mentors and stuff were like, you're doing too much. So I was a photographer for the yearbook. I was an admissions tour guide. I was a part of students in medicine. I was like a global ambassador. Which is somebody who's like studied abroad before and they, you know, answer other student questions and like discuss how those opportunities connect and inform campus learning experiences. I was involved in Campuses Against Cancer every single year. Um, I was a team captain. I was a part of the mentoring program. I was a prefect and a proctor. And those are basically just like RAs in college. Um, I was in theater. And then as far as community service goes, I volunteered at a daycare and I also volunteered at a um, after school 
school facility that serves low-income families. Um, and then when I came back home, I volunteered at the Children's Museum, and I volunteered with my parents' nonprofit organization. So I was doing a lot. But that doesn't mean that you have to go <laughs> above and beyond just to get, you know, in the college. But I do think that a lot of colleges want to see you outside of your academics like what else are you doing so what made me choose unc so i was nominated to be actually i was the moorhead kane semi-finalist um at my school and then i didn't make it past the i think it was the second round for like moorhead kane scholars at unc i didn't make it and i was super sad because i was like you know, this was my opportunity to have college paid for because my parents weren't able to afford it. Um, <laughs> and my mom even told me, she was like, she was like, if you don't get any type of like scholarships or anything, you're not going to college. And I was like, what do you mean? But no, like at the end of the day, we couldn't afford it. And my mom was not about to have me or have her come out in debt because it's not like I could put I could put loans in my name. I got declined from that, but UNC like continued to send me emails and like I got one email. It was like despite you know you know not making um the final round for more Kane scholars and not being selected, like we still would love to have you at our university. And they were just really really consistent, and I was like, I like this. So then once all my little acceptances came in, um, so UNC offered me a full ride through covenant which oh, carolina covenant is just absolutely amazing the the mentorship there the resources you have if you're a covenant scholar really really take advantage of it emory offered me a full ride as well um university of miami didn't offer me any money howard didn't offer me any money um none of the other schools i got into offered any money and then like i said i was waitlisted at harvard but I wouldn't have found out about that until after like college decision day so I didn't want to you know take the chances especially because I had already gotten into college at that point as far as Harvard goes because of my parents financials um I would have gotten a full ride like automatically it was something like if your parents make under a certain amount of money then you're guaranteed to have a full ride or something like that I'm not sure don't quote me on it. yeah that's that as far as applying for financial aid like how did i even become a covenant scholar my mom and i applied for financial aid um through fafsa and the css profile certain colleges require either the fafsa or the css some colleges require both i'm not really sure how things have changed um since then because it's i applied to college in 2016 that was like like five years ago if you are looking to have some sort of financial aid i would say apply do applications for both the css profile and fafsa application but just based on my um expected like family contribution which was zero dollars i was offered these scholarships um so that's how i ended up <laughs> becoming a carolina covenant scholar which i'm immensely immensely like grateful for and i'll put the link down below to more about carolina covenant you know if you're um what you call it trying to go to unc or even coming to unc so as far as prepping for applications and i'm sorry for those of you who are already admitted and you're like what's the unc experience like i just want to like put this out there your supplements are the area for you to shine and to really, really express your interest in why you want to go to that school. The Common App is, it's general, it's going to all the colleges that you apply to, but those supplements, like, put your foot in those. And then I, I'm not sure if this is still the case for Common App, but towards the end, there's always that, is there anything else that you'd like to add or like, you know, that was left out that couldn't be included in your personal statement. I mentioned how I'm not a good test taker and you know like why my standardized test scores aren't the best i explained that i acknowledged that and i talked about how despite all that you know x y and z so if you're not the best take test taker in the world i definitely say include that on your common app and like make it known 
don't be scared to acknowledge that because at the end of the day like transparency is key like you really just want to shine and be you as best as possible um in the application process now for my incoming tar heels my future tar heels um there are general education requirements that you have to fulfill that i put somewhere on my screen i don't know where i'm gonna put it yet but yeah it's like cr fl qr lf which is lifetime fitness um hs ss vp there's so many you can you can see them right here um and an easy way to look for classes that fulfill those general education requirements you're gonna go to Corsicle um and I'm gonna put a screenshot on here and in the area that says gen eds you can type in all the general education requirements you're trying to fulfill and there are a lot of classes that fulfill like two or three gen eds so that means you don't have to waste like three credit hours taking a class that fulfills only one gen ed um just because you definitely want to get those out of the way so that you can focus on also fulfilling the prereqs for your major or your minor pre-med <laughs> definitely has hands it is a it's a challenging you know path to be on i think there's this preconceived notion that pre-med is a major and that's not the case um majors go from biology to chemistry to um triple a b to um journalism exercise sports science chinese i started off as a bio major i was a bio major my first year and then one of my co-workers was like you're pre-med like just become an exercise and sports science major he was like it's more hands-on um you'd it's it's more applied and i'd recommend you do that because the classes are typically enjoyable which makes it a little more easy so i was like bet so i switched over and i became an exercise support my science major my sophomore year i was trying to play catch up a little bit and i took pretty heavy course loads all semesters like 17 credit hours and I gave myself a break for the first time last semester and I took only 12. I feel like I would not have graduated in four years had I not taken those two summer classes in those two different summers. Even though they were only three and four credits, like, I don't know, I just feel like just it would have required me to overload or just like take 17 or 18 hours like every single semester. I You can either take 17 or 18, I honestly don't remember. Also, if you're pre-med, I would recommend declaring the chemistry minor, maybe after you've finished all your chemistry prereqs. That's the only reason I declared that minor. I was like, oh, I finished all my chemistry classes to fulfill my med prereqs, so why not declare the chem minor? So that's why I did that. Another thing, don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask questions, literally just ask questions. We're not gonna get anywhere if we don't ask questions or get help. Make it a point to get to know your professors. I know that some people are a little more shy than others, or you may get the impression that your professors don't wanna get to know you or something like that. And I know with virtual learning, it's definitely a lot more difficult to just go to office hours and stuff like that. It's just, it, it feels like it's not as personal, but at Carolina, your professors want to get to know you. I've had a few who just like had no inkling desire to know who I was. And that's okay. <laughs> Not every single professor is going to want to do that. But for the most part, they do. So, you know, for my future Tar Heels, I don't know when you're going. I don't know if you're going this fall. I don't know if you're going next fall. I don't know what life's going to be like. But, oh, give me a second. Oh my goodness, y'all. I'm so sorry. I don't even know if my camera's in the same place. I had to take that call. Um, yeah. But what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, yes. Whether or not you're going this fall, next fall, um, whatever. So virtual learning and like physical learning. So being at Carolina physically, I absolutely loved it. The campus is beautiful. Most of you are probably in state. I'm sure you know what the campus looks like. It's just such a beautiful campus. The atmosphere is amazing. Like, you walk past people on campus and everybody's smiling. Well, was smiling. As far as dorms go, I lived on South Campus 
all three years, three and a half years. Um, honestly, are you really in college for four years or is it three and a half years? I think it's three and a half years. 2017, 18, 19, 20. No. We won't get into the math. I was in Cory, which is a freshman dorm for three years. I was in RA. I stayed in a dorm on North Campus during orientation and I stayed, I think I stayed on North Campus for both of the summers that I was there. Oh wait, no, I wasn't there last summer. I took physics at home. The rooms and the bathrooms, they're typically hall style. So that means it's a whole bunch of different rooms and it's like a community, communal shared bathrooms. On South Campus, like in the Quarry and Hardins and Craig North, things like that, um, you get the suite style, which is, um, a room like Jack and Jill almost room here two people bathroom room here so you're sharing a, sharing a bathroom with three people then you have the high-rise buildings as well on south campus and it's like two four six eight it's like eight to a suite those eight people share a bathroom but with COVID everything has changed so to my understanding they only have one person in each room they've definitely like reduced the number of students they're allowing on campus there is an application for that or at least there was in the spring another resource other than carolina covenant um and my professors that were a beneficial resource was the learning center i went to them for one-on-one -on -one tutoring it's a peer tutor, but someone who has taken that course or is like very experienced in that course gives you assistance um, each week. And you can go on to learningcenter.unc.edu. I've typed it below. Um, and you can go on there and sign up for peer tutoring if you're having a great deal of difficulty in a subject. I think that is all that I really have. Um, it's just been a great experience so far. I've grown <laughs> more of a love for sports. Oh, I think I left that out of my extracurriculars. I did play sports um, in high school. And then I was like, a, oh, I was a captain, a team captain for hip hop dance team. Um, I don't know how I left that out. I feel like that is really it. Um, I can't think of anything else right now and I definitely don't want to sit here being like um 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 the whole time. If you have any more questions feel free to drop them below and I will definitely respond to them. Uh, but yeah if you got this far thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch y'all next time. Ryan Little. Yeah. <laughs>